Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here on the west coast of Canada, more specifically on Vancouver Island. I hope everybody is having a good weekend so far, staying healthy, staying strong. Welcome Zohra. Hi, Shakzoda, Panchal, good to see students in the class. Welcome, Jainil, welcome to our members. Everyone in this class, we are looking at speaking part three, and we're going to discuss how to give those expert level answers so you can get band nines uh, for the speaking section. While we wait for some more of your peers, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Visit us there for the general IELTS. Check us out at gieltshelp.com. That's generalieltshelp.com. On both of our websites, we have lots and lots of information to help you improve your English, your grammar, vocabulary, and your communication uh, for your IELTS exam. And we have free speaking practice as well. Uh, this is your uh, academic web portal here. You can click that big red button to join the premium package. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. We are a, a British Council IELTS test registration center and certified agents. Uh, General IELTS website looks like this with the green background, same idea. Click that big red button. And again, we do have free speaking practice with other students. So when you create a student account, uh, you log in to your My Student account, and then uh, you will find our computer-based practice exams, online course, workbooks, lesson videos, uh, CDs. We've got lots and lots of content, a couple hundred hours of content. And then you have your student partner speaking here. And uh, when you go there, uh, then you will find other students waiting to practice with you. Right now, we have uh, Juraj and Bhushan who are waiting for some students to practice. So uh, check that out when you've got a minute in your day. Keep the window open so somebody can ping you for your practice. Um, students, uh, you can also get our apps, Academic IELTS Help app, links to ahelp.com, General IELTS Help app, links to gieltshelp.com, and you can follow us on Instagram, IELTS underscore aehelp, gieltshelp. Hi, Eugene, love the emojis, always puts a smile on my face, that's great. Agnes, good to see um, you in the class as well. Mastermind, you're awesome too. Thank you for the compliment. Uh, if anybody wants to get a hold of me, you can do that by sending me an email to adrian at aehelp.com. Okay. All right. Uh, so today's class finishes this week when we're when we're done, and then uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, no class. That's usual. We'll be doing some. Uh, filming for HD video lessons and then I'm back on Wednesday the 16th and we'll have another full week of classes. I will post this schedule on our YouTube community board. Welcome Carolina, our uh, chat moderator. Fantastic to have you in the class. Here we go everyone. So uh, this is speaking. We're going to get right into it um, and make sure to speak and repeat. So um, we just finished a class before this one on speaking part two, which was the cue card. Okay. Uh, the speaking part cue card was, uh, a place where, uh, I go to relax. That was the topic of the card. And many of our members that were in this class and maybe some of our students that are in the class as well watched this uh, speaking part two cue card. We talked about the Banff Springs Resort Hotel uh, in the Rocky Mountains, which has swimming pools, restaurants, um, a spa, massage therapy, physiotherapy, all kinds of great amenities. Charmin says, yeah, I watched it. Good for you, Charmin. 
it's going to make much more sense in this class because um, speaking part three is connected to speaking part two. So the examiner will say, okay, now speaking part two is over. Your time is up. Let's begin part three. For part three, I will ask you a question related uh, to uh, speaking part two and some questions on the topic of uh, part two for part three. So they might ask you a question. They will always ask you a question related to your response. Hey, Akshay, that's awesome. Akshay just uh, made a super chat donation of 100 rupees. And Akshay Kumar is saying, Hi, Adrian, just wanted to thank you for all your teaching and live classes. It helped me to achieve a 7.5 band score in IELTS general. Akshay, congratulations, and thank you for that uh, sign or show of appreciation. That's great. That helps us to keep going. Um, Akshay, please send me an email uh, so I can grab your testimonial. Okay, I would love to put your testimonial on our General IELTS website. Um, students, the hundreds of testimonials you see on our websites, they're all real students that we're proud to have helped on their IELTS journey. Okay, so uh, getting back to point here, okay, so again, uh, part three is a continuation of part two. Um, and um, in this case, uh, the examiner might ask you a question like, um, what is your favorite uh, relaxing activity at this uh, resort hotel? Okay, that could be a question. Uh, here they're trying to get you into conversation that's unique to you, making sure that you're not just memorizing answers and templates, okay? All right. Uh, MD Jashan, yeah, of course you can email uh, questions. The email is at the beginning of the class. Maybe Carolina can put my email up in the chat for testimonials and questions as well. Okay, um, so, all right, here's the question. So for those of you who saw the class that we just had, you can probably answer this. Even if you didn't see the class, you can come up with an answer. So what is your favorite relaxing activity at this uh, resort hotel. Thank you, Carolina. Um, okay. Give me a nice full sentence uh, for this. Okay. Now, immediately, even with this follow up question to your response, think about the answer plus an explanation plus an example. Okay. So think about all of those elements. Be fluent. Give a nice, well, rounded answer okay all right so what is your favorite relaxing activity at this hotel right okay give me a nice uh full sentence answer all right while i wait for your answers i see that uh Aldo Mendez also wrote, you guys were so helpful when I presented my IELTS academic for the first time, May 27th, I achieved a band seven. Thank you so much. Greetings from Cancun, Mexico. What a beautiful place in the world, Cancun, Mexico. Uh, Aldo, you're very welcome. Again, send me your testimonial. We'd love to have it. Uh, congrats on your great score. Seven is a fantastic score. It means you're a good user of the English language. You're a level C2. Okay, that's great. All right, um, Charmin says, well, my most favorite relaxing activity is the hot spring spas. It helps me to decompress all my stress and recharge my batteries. Uh, okay, good, Charmin, yeah. Manwi says, well, I love the spa at the resort because it relieves my fatigue and the hot bath that they provide is fantastic to relax my body and mind. Moreover, they use organic products in the spa, which is just... Uh, so reassuring. All right, very good. Nice answers. Arda says, at this resort hotel, my favorite relaxing activity is, rel is listening to music while watching the sunrise because that really removes stress and massages my brain. I like it, Arda. Nice explanation and example. And I like the metaphor of massaging your brain. Very good. Uh, Rajvir says, although this hotel offers various relaxing activities, my number one activity to unwind is swimming. 
Not only does it provide me with physical strength, but also helps to relax my mind um, through meeting fresh faces in the pool. Okay, very good, Rajvir. Yeah, and I like the use of the collocation fresh faces. So not only does it mean new people, but there's kind of a play on words with Rajvir because people are feeling refreshed. So fresh faces is a very good collocation there. Okay, uh, Rashika says, being a nature lover, I love hiking in the snowy mountain areas. They are There are many flora and fauna in the fresh Air helps me to rejuvenate. Yeah, absolutely. Some oxygen-rich air. Very nice. Okay. So what is your favorite relaxing activity at this resort hotel? Um, it's tough to choose. But if I had to say, I would go with the uh, thermal baths as they relax both my body and mind. In fact, the last time I was there after spending a couple hours in the hot spring I uh, felt um, like I was 10 years younger. All right. Uh, yeah, so all of those answers that uh, you were giving, I think they're fantastic. Okay, I like the one with the sunrise, with the hike, they're all great. Um, so there's no one right answer. What's more important is that you're fluent, that you explain yourself, and you give a smooth example like this. Um, it's tough to choose, but if I had to say, I would go with the thermal baths as they relax both my body and mind. In fact, last time I was there, after spending a couple hours in the hot spring, I felt like I was 10 years younger. Hmm, how nice. All right, great. Uh, so be ready for this follow-up question, okay? It's guaranteed to come. All right, now, um, part three. Let's talk about the importance of relaxation. Okay, so again, it will be a related topic. So let's talk about the importance of relaxation. Why is it important for people to take some time to relax in the day? Okay, so keep your answers clear and simple. Don't go into a, a, a biological or a physician's explanation of the importance of relaxing. Okay, unless you're a physician and you're sure that you can express uh, this idea in English, just keep it uh, simpler, keep it common idea, but be original with the way you express yourself. Okay, so why is it important for people to take some time uh, to relax in the day? Give me a nice full sentence uh, answer for this one. Okay. All right. Aman Jot says the reason for relaxing in between activities is not only to have more energy for further work, but also for mental stability. Aman Jot, maybe. I'm not sure where the rest of that uh, response was left, but you want, of course, a little bit more. I'm guessing you're still writing. Agnes says, from my experience watching the sunrise and sunset during the afternoon and morning time too, walking around, eating, hiking, getting refreshed, um, watching action movies. All right, Agnes, you're jumping around with a lot of ideas and it's creating confusion. Don't do that, okay? Uh, focus on one, maybe two ideas uh, and have clarity, okay? So, especially if you're answering the question of what is your favorite activity, okay? 
So one activity, especially when it's your favorite activity. Okay, uh, Jainil writes, during the day, people need to take a short break uh, to unwind. This is vital because they can not only be more productive for upcoming work and study, but also less stressed. Okay. Uh, Geraldi Ruder says, I think one of the reasons for that is that people need to recharge their energy uh, and let go of their tension. Why, Geraldi? So answer the why question, okay? Create more fluency, All right? MD Jason says, relaxation is very important for all because through relaxing, people can uh, recuperate more energy uh, to do more work. Okay, a um, little bit more explanation, Jason. Notice how that's a very common answer. So many people are giving that answer. You want to be a little bit more comprehensive with your answers, okay? Unmaldeep says it's pivotal for the well-being of individuals to find some time to relax um, as this kind of stress buster assists uh, individuals in keeping up with the pace of life. Um, when people work 10 to 12 hours a day, they need at least one or two hours uh, of break time in order to catch their breath and regain some energy uh, for more work. Okay, so... On Maldeep Good, again, a little bit more detail here. All right. Um, Mergal Shahbani says, let me sleep on it. There are many reasons, but the chief one among them is refreshing the mind and body after a hectic uh, lifestyle and getting away from stressful days. Uh, Mergal, we do not... Do not use the statement, let me sleep on it. That's awkward, okay? Uh, if you say, let me sleep on it in the IELTS interview, and I say, oh yeah, sure, okay, come back tomorrow. Um, when you sleep on it, it actually literally means that you're gonna sleep on it and uh, come back the next day with a better answer, okay? Uh, obviously, that can't happen in the IELTS exam. So do not use the expression, let me sleep on it. It's awkward. And you might even get kind of a smile out of your examiner, but definitely you will also uh, lose half a band score for speaking incoherently, okay? All right, so um, it's critical for individuals uh, to have a bit of me time in the day uh, to let go of stress and regain uh, some energy, not only so that they can be more productive in their work and study, but also uh, for maintaining a positive attitude. Uh, for this reason, workplaces provide coffee breaks and lunch breaks for their employees. Okay, so that would be your band nine answer. So this would be the kind of answer where the examiner goes, okay, wow, that's good communication because this candidate not only has mastery of vocabulary and grammar, but they also have very good understanding of quality communication, okay? Keep in mind, uh, students, that band six means a fluent user of the English language. So uh, when somebody can fluently speak English, like a native speaker, fluently speaking, that's a band six. It's not a band eight, not a band nine, okay? Band eight, Band nine are a very good and expert user of the English language. This requires much, much more than just fluently speaking English. It requires communication skills, and that's what we're doing here, OK? 
Okay, so again, this is speaking. So speak and repeat. Uh, for those students who are confident with their English, try to do the repetition without reading. Okay, so try to do it without reading, just through listening. Okay, uh, so from the question to the answer, here we go. Why is it important for people to take some time to relax in the day? It's critical for individuals to have a bit of me time in the day. Uh, to let go of stress and regain some energy, not only so that they can be more productive in their work and study, but also for maintaining a positive attitude. For this reason, workplaces provide coffee breaks and lunch breaks uh, for their employees. Okay, that's your smooth kind of example. Um, all right, uh, notice uh, this kind of interesting vocabulary, the me time. Okay, this is a modern type of slang. And yes, it's absolutely okay to use this kind of expression if you know it. This is a reflection of modern English. And that will definitely get you some points because the examiner will realize that here is a student who has um, been familiarized with modern types of English expression and slang as well. Okay. All right. Um, so... Expect the follow-up question. What can happen if people do not find time to relax? Give me a nice full sentence answer uh, for this one. Chani uh, Daliwal, uh, use English in the chat, please. All right. Arda says, if people don't find time to relax um, and have rough schedules, that can impact them in negative ways, like not being able to focus, uh, not giving their attention to their performance, and this can cause mistakes. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's why um, truck drivers are required to stop after a certain amount of driving time so they don't cause accidents. Okay, Arda, so think about those smooth flowing examples. Uh, Arda, by the way, you did a good job of using the question. So if people don't find time to relax, that's a great use of the question, okay? Uh, it's good to use the question in your answers. So what can happen if people do not find time to relax? If people don't find time to relax, use the question to build momentum, to build fluency, okay? Amanjad says, uh, the only result will be exhaustion and ultimately decreased productivity, which will further influence the economic status of the individual and cause severe mental illness. Yeah, Amanjad, uh, country? I don't know. We haven't gotten to that extent yet. Okay, Jasur Beck Vlogs says, well, I guess it's extremely important for individuals to have uh, some time for themselves in the day to unwind as well as to let go of stress and to gain more zip. Why, Jasur Beck? Can you give me an example? Okay. All right. Um... Zohra says, what is the difference between speaking part one and three? They seem similar. They're quite different, Zohra. Uh, speaking part one is about you on a more general topic like uh, hobbies or talk about computers and uh, pencil or talk about math. Uh, and it's about you. So the questions are specifically dealing with your life and your experiences. Part three is a more specific topic. So here it's relaxation or the importance of relaxation and relaxing places, uh, it's connected to part two, and it's asking about objective opinions or objective truths or facts uh, based on your knowledge, but not specifically about you, okay? Zohra, so that's the big difference between part one and part three. Rashika says, uh, if individuals do not take 
time to relax their body and mind, uh, they will become exhausted and they will not be able to concentrate properly on their uh, work and their productivity will uh, decrease. Yeah, okay. And their error rate will increase, right? Um, all right, Tanu Dave, I think you're answering that previous question as well. All right. Gordon Young says, some people may feel depressed because they have to work and study day in and day out without having time to relax. Um, and this leading to insufficient time for them to actually enjoy life. Okay, Gordon. Yeah, I stretched it a little bit to reflect the question a bit more. All right. Uh, Jeremiah Manzen says, if people do not find time to relax, the tendency will have a big impact in their activities on their, uh, daily life. Um, and their work productivity will decline. Jeremiah, not bad ideas, but you do have to be careful with your grammar and your word choice. Okay. So you don't have repetition. Mahi says, if people would not have time to unwind, it would not only make them unproductive, but also lead to severe stress. Uh, to ensure the well-being of employees, many MNCs provide various facilities uh, to relax. Um, yeah, and Mahi, instead of the acronym, just use the full word, multinational companies. Okay. All right. Carlos writes, um, people are going to be physically affected. Their bodies cannot maintain the constant stress of the workload for long periods of time. If they do not relax from time to time, they will be burned out. Nice expression, burned out. Uh, Carlos, do not use you and your in your speaking or writing of the IELTS, okay? So there is no use of you or your except for general IELTS writing task one letter writing. It's the only place where the pronoun you and your should ever appear. Not in any other part because you're never directly speaking to the marker or the examiner. Okay. So I'm going to make a note of that for everybody. It's a very common mistake and it is a mistake. Okay. So just keep this in mind. This is an important tip. Okay. Uh, do not use the, it's called the second person voice where you speak directly to your audience in any uh, part of the IELTS exam, except for uh, task one writing of the general IELTS, okay? You should not speak directly to your examiner, okay? Because you don't know them, right? So um, it's uh, flawed communication, right? That's a very important tip. Okay, um, so what can happen if people do not find time to relax? Well, if people do not have an opportunity to release stress, they will eventually uh, burn themselves out. Yeah, to be burned out means you have no energy. Uh, their work uh, will be less productive and error rates uh, will increase. This is the reason that um, transport truck drivers are mandated by law to stop driving every few hours and 
take a break uh, so that they do not fall asleep at the wheel and cause traffic accidents. Okay, so that's the real world example there. I mentioned it a little bit earlier. Also, there are lots of other examples that you could use. Somebody who's a computer programmer, you'd want to take a break after a while so that you keep writing clean, effective code that functions. All right, so you can think of different uh, Different examples, but smooth flowing examples certainly make communication clear and more connected. All right. Now, again, uh, another reminder is use your concepts from part two to make connections as well. So whenever you feel there's an opportunity or a chance to connect your part two cue card response to part three, you should do that. That will increase your band score. You're going to have more coherence and more connection among your ideas. All right, so uh, repeat after me. Well, if people do not have an opportunity to release stress, they will eventually burn themselves out, their work will be less productive, and error rates will increase. This is the reason that transport truck drivers are mandated by law to stop driving every few hours and take a break so that they do not fall asleep at the wheel and cause traffic accidents. That's just one example of why uh, taking breaks and uh, relaxing is important. All right, next question. Here we go, everyone. By the way, you're all doing a great job and certainly expressing yourself and using the language that you have. That's your path to improvement. So keep doing that. If I miss one of your responses in the chat, worry not. I tried to catch different people at different times uh, with slight priority for our channel members. Okay, here we go. So here's the next question. Some people feel that keeping calm and staying relaxed is a skill that can be learned and improved. Do you agree with this? And obviously you should explain why or why not. Okay. All right. So Agnes says, all exists in this world, we can do capacity enough. To people do not find relaxed, probably they get sick or more productive or not more productive. Like a machine, we need to stop if overheat comes. Agnes, that's quite confusing. You have to work on your grammar, okay? All right. Oh, it says, although people are influenced by their surroundings, um, stress and tension, I agree with this notion that staying relaxed is a skill which people can learn. Um, okay, what do you mean, Oa? So why do you agree that people can learn to relax? How do we do that? Okay. Rashika writes, uh, yes, I agree with this statement because many people and employees uh, become calm and stay relaxed when they work a long period um, in comparison to the initial uh, time. This transformation happens through their experience and knowledge, which means, yes, it can be learned and improved. Okay, not bad, Rashika. I'm following you, and I like your original diction. Okay. All right. Uh, Depika says, oh, yeah, of course, I do agree. Our brain is always ready to learn uh, new information, forming new habits and routines. The earlier, the better. Uh, but whatever the age of the person, the idea works. Okay, um, Depika, not a bad start. Be more specific though. Here we're talking about the skill of relaxation. So this is what I mean by part three is more specific. Don't generalize the answer, but stay specific, okay? I like your style. I like your diction. You need to be more specific. Also, Depika, don't use the word stuff. It's a low, low, low quality word, okay? 
So uh, new information. Okay, new information. Uh, Tanu Dave says, many individuals think that learning skills like relaxing and keeping calm is necessary for them to be energetic. And I do agree with this notion that it can be learned. Okay, students, focus on the question. Okay, uh, answer the question directly. Manvi says, yes, I'm in agreement with this idea that the skill of relaxation can be learned because in schools, teachers train their students um, uh, with activities to help them unwind by playing certain kinds of games. Yeah, including sports, right? Okay. Okay, uh, JV Rock says, certainly not. It's not a skill at all. We can say that it's a state of mind. It depends on the activity which is performed by the individual. For example, listening to music or watching a movie. That's another opinion, uh, JV Rock. Um, however, do know that saying no is sometimes more challenging than saying yes. Okay. All right. Uh, June says, yes, I strongly believe that the ability to keep our inner peace and to unwind can be acquired by making plans uh, with enough breaks could help to reduce anxiety on deadlines. Very nice paraphrasing, June. Fantastic. Beautiful paraphrasing, June. Uh, keeping inner peace. Very nice paraphrasing there. Uh, can be acquired instead of can be learned. Very nice, June. And just like me, your examiner will catch that paraphrasing and you will score better on your lexical resource marks uh, and in your overall band score. Rajveer writes, I certainly agree that keeping a relaxed lifestyle is a skill that can be learned through online and offline training. Some centers provide relaxation exercises, which provide guided training to enhance people's abilities to experience uh, peace of mind. Uh, yeah, beautiful, Rajveer. Very nice um, visualization. When I read your answer, Rajveer, I can feel that you visualized your answer, you thought it through, and then you responded. And that's what you need for that Band 8, Band 9. So I concur. with this idea 100%. People can uh, participate in a variety of both physical and mental exercises uh, in order to acquire skills <coughs> to find inner peace. Immediate ones um, that come to mind are uh, yoga and meditation. In fact, uh, many tourists uh, participate in such activities at the uh, Banff Springs Hotel, uh, such as guided meditation. All right. Uh, so again, making that connection with part two, right? As I mentioned before. So uh, repeat after me. Some people feel that keeping calm and staying relaxed is a skill that can be learned and improved. Do you agree with this? I concur with this idea 100%. Uh, people can participate in a variety of both physical and mental exercises in order to acquire uh, skills to find inner peace. Immediate ones that come to mind are yoga and meditation. In fact, many tourists participate in such activities at the Banff Springs Hotel, such as guided meditation. Okay. 
<clears throat> All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, June, I thought you would catch that. So conquer uh, to give opinions. Yeah, it's not conquer, it's concur. And I believe the correct spelling is that. Concur, okay? So yeah, June, not conquer, but concur. Concur, the pronunciation's concur, and I concur means I agree, okay? All right, and um, skills to find inner peace, okay? All right, uh, good. Let's go to the next question. Uh, what kind of exercise can people do to let go of stress? When is it a good time to do this for people? So uh, they might ask you um, probably the second question here. Uh, so if you've already named a couple of exercises that uh, people can do to let go of stress, they might just follow up with this. Uh, when is it a good time to do these kinds of exercises for people? Okay. So the examiner is not locked into uh, asking every question that they have on the sheet in front of them. It will also depend on the answers that you give, okay? So the follow-up question, if I were your examiner, that I would ask you at this point is, when is it a good time to do these kinds of exercises uh, for people? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Amor Chamek says, there are many activities uh, that help to blow off steam. In order to let go of stress, some people prefer to walk at the park after a busy day at work or university. Others may sit uh, on, on the sand on a beach and watch the sunset. Okay, Amor, you're answering the previous question that I deleted, but that's okay. I like your expression, blow off steam. Uh, blow off steam is another way to say let go of stress. So I'll put that up here for everybody. It's a nice idiomatic expression for letting go of stress. Blow off uh, steam. Okay, and it's OFF -F in this case. Blow off uh, steam. Okay, it means to let go of uh, stress. Decompress is another way to say it, okay? All right, whenever you hear new words, new vocabulary, new idioms, make sure to add it to your study notes, okay? Balbir Singh says, well, as I mentioned before, doctors suggest uh, aerobic exercises and physical workouts to, um, let, to release stress, and doing these in the early morning is the best time when people have some uh, energy. Okay, physical energy. Uh, Bob, you're good. I made a couple of corrections. Pay attention to that. All right, Abhishek uh, says, in my opinion, the best time for these activities is the morning or the evening, uh, depending on the person's schedule or the type of activity. I usually go for a jog every morning and do some meditation in the evening. Uh, very good, Abhishek. Nice. Yeah, so it can absolutely depend on the activity, something more active for stress release in the morning, like jogging, and something perhaps a little bit less physically active for letting go of stress or blowing off steam in the evening. Very nice. Nicely done. Okay. So, um, well, the timing of such exercises um, slightly depends on the individual's uh, schedule and the type of exercise. Uh, it is a good idea to do physical exercises that strengthen the body and mind in the morning like going for a, a 5k jog 
and uh, doing meditation in the evening. An hour before bed. Okay, good. Um, 17 545 Hamanth says, I think breathing exercises will release lots of stress uh, in the day. I would also say doing these in the early morning is a good time to feel some positive vibes mentally. Good, Hamant. I made a few corrections there. Okay. All right. Arina Naim says, well, in my opinion, the best time for doing relaxing exercises is in the early morning and in the afternoon. I usually go for a walk in the morning and also a walk in the evening. Okay, Arena, good. I like your smooth flowing example there. Very nice. I made a couple of slight adjustments to make it more accurate. Okay. Uh, VG Pusala says the best time to do um, decompression exercises is in the early morning where one can find uh, some silent time without disturbances. There they can concentrate on the activity that they're doing. Yeah, early mornings are a great time because there's a little bit more peace and quiet so people can be uh, more engaged in their relaxing activity. Absolutely. Okay. Anonymous Anonymous says people usually do these exercises in their free time. However, many companies started to offer uh, relaxing areas that contain equipment to help their employees relax from work stress. Okay, Anonymous Anonymous, the, the focus here is the time. What time is it good to do these exercises? So focus on that. Okay. Janiel says the most effective activities from my perspective perspective or yoga and meditation and the best time for these is in the early morning hours to unwind from the relentless work and study stress of the previous day okay Jainil, yeah finish your idea make sure it's clear okay all right um here we go everyone so uh when is a good time to do these kinds of exercises for people while the timing of such exercises slightly depends on the individual's schedule and the type of exercise, it is a good idea to do physical exercises that strengthen the body and mind in the morning, like going for a 5K jog, and doing meditation in the evening, an hour before bed. Yeah, maybe sitting meditation might be worth adding at that point. All right, and as long as you're doing a really good job in your part three and you're staying fluent, and you have two, maybe a little bit more, two minutes or a bit more left in your speaking, the examiner will ask you some more questions. Uh, they'll introduce a secondary topic, like let's talk a bit more about um, places for relaxation. Uh, where are good places for relaxation? What are the differences among these? Do you think it is the responsibility of people or the government to ensure places for people to relax? Can you elaborate? I'll let you practice these questions uh, after this class. I'm going to finish here for now. Again, remember everyone that you can go to our website, aehelp.com or gilshelp.com. You can create a free uh, student account. When you log into your student account, you will see all of these materials, computer-based practice exams, online course, lesson videos, audio CDs, and you will also see this student partner speaking option. It's absolutely free. We created this to encourage students to practice. You will find other IELTS students in here. Right now, uh, Mohammed Abdul is waiting for somebody to link up and chat with him. So you can video audio chat. Um, and of course, if you like our courses, you can sign up for the premium package. Just click that big red button. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. And we are an IELTS Registration Center and Certified Agent. So you are in good hands with us for sure. Students, that's it for this week of live classes. Uh, the next class will be speaking part one starting on Wednesday. And then we will have our regular 
Wednesday to Saturday uh, schedule. Really great interaction in the chat today, everyone. Um, I wish all of you have a great uh, weekend as well. Thank you, Rajveer. You have a nice weekend too. Uh, thank you to all of our members. Uh, congrats again for those uh, students who uh, got a great score on their IELTS exam. Remember to send us a testimonial. Um, again, practice makes perfect. Remember your strategies. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from the beautiful garden city of Victoria here on Vancouver Island, west coast of Canada. I hope to see you all next week. Much love to all of you. And if you like these uh, live classes, be sure to subscribe to our channel so that you get uh, all of the schedules and information. Bye for now, everyone. Have a great rest of your weekend.